Susan Berry's son TJ didn't fit the stereotype of someone with an eating disorder because he was a boy. If he would have had cancer, you know, we would have had all that empathy and I would have been casseroled to death. But you tell somebody that your kid has an eating di disorder and they're like, why does he want to be skinny? He didn't want to be skinny. He wanted to be, have muscles and be faster and a better athlete and a perfect athlete. And he was. He succeeded at many sports and was a straight A student. I told TJ, it's okay to lift weights for an hour, not four hours. It's okay to do sit-ups, not a thousand a day in the morning and a thousand at night. It's okay to go out for a run. Go for a three mile run, not a five mile run in the morning and then sneak out and do another five mile run. It becomes an addiction and it's something that they cannot stop and control. TJ passed away 15 years ago at the age of 22 after struggling with the eating disorder anorexia nervosa. A lab at MSU is working to understand the causes of eating disorders and to correct wrong ideas about who gets them and why. Families are not the causes of an eating disorder and actually they can be the best allies. Kristen Cobert is a research specialist in a lab led by psychology professor Kelly Klump. Their team studies biological factors that contribute to getting an eating disorder such as genetics and hormones. We think that if you have some underlying genetic vulnerabilities for eating disorders, hormones might be really important in determining whether those genetic vulnerabilities actually like express or come, come out as an eating disorder. And making clear, it's not just wealthy people, and it's not just girls and women. And we think the reason that idea has sort of persisted is because historically those are the people who have been able to actually like access treatment. So we found that in both boys and girls, they're more likely to develop eating disorder symptoms if they are from either a neighborhood that has less resources or less financial wealth or a family that is having kind of less financial resources. Wayne State student Jesse Linton says she was fortunate because she got treatment very early. Her anorexia started when she was around 12 years old. I was a dancer, I was a ballerina, and I just wanted to be skinny, you know? So I was doing things that um, were proven to be effective to lose weight, but were also incredibly dangerous. Like eating becomes like a fear. Like you're like genuinely afraid to eat and to gain weight. This is like facing your biggest fear, if it's whatever it is, like spiders or snakes every day, three times a day. And that's like, it, it evokes that kind of emotional response in your, in your body, which is, which is hard. TJ weighed 78 pounds the day he died and he left his mother with a mission. One of the last things TJ said to me was, mom, why can't somebody fix this? You know, and it was almost like a message to me, um, okay, I've left all of this stuff mom, do something with it. And she did. She wrote the book titled Dying to be Perfect to prevent other parents from going through what she and her family went through for over eight years. We have the link to the book on our website at fox47news.com. I'm Louisa Vigora reporting.